of every leadership is to inspire hope, explaining periodically what he is doing, what he's going to do differently. APC leaders, Bam of President Buhari's letter to Nigerians at New Year. As Nigeria military mops up Boko Haram entry. An anti corruption lie Mohammed says records prove Nigeria is winning the war. On Good Morning Nigeria today, our focus is on Nigerian political outlook in 2020. All right, Nigerians approach 2019 with what we usually say is cautious optimism, of course, as it was an election year with very high stakes. And as anticipated, it was a year of intense political activities, Claire, filled by fallouts from the 2019 general elections. And the alignment and realignment, defections and emergence of new political parties, dozens of them, as well as gladiators. Now, the agitation for constitutional amendment to uh, lower the age for contesting uh, certain positions all pointed to the stakes. Well, Claire, 2019 has come and gone. Mm. And it's lived up to its billing. Fear has been entertained where allowed, and the elections, despite the postponement at the last minute was held and certified free, fair and credible by both the international and national organizations. Uh, of course, there were also upsets and unexpected results which characterized uh, its characteristics of high elections. But generally, 2019 politically did not disappoint Nigerians. Yes, we really had some surprise upsets. Yes. You know, and all that. That's why we are looking back at 2019 to see the good, the bad, and the ugly with a view to consolidate on the right and correct shortcomings for a better future. We're also going to peep into the crystal ball to see what the future holds for Nigeria regarding the prospects for Nigerian politics in 2020. Remember, there are also two governorship elections, one coming up in Edo and Ondo states. Now, even though politics, of course, does not mean elections alone. You know, that's right, Claire. Elections or no elections, politics will always be there, as it is a major determinant of how people are governed. So, we seem set to or for another interesting discussion on the program today. And Jimmy, mm. you know, talking politics is always a delight, so, you know, when, when we talk about to discuss about. So, so many things to talk about. And, well, of course, especially uh, the theme of uh, the theme of discussion and the discussion this morning, there'll be no dull moment. And we will probe what shaped Nigerian politics in 2019. You know... Yes, of course, uh, yes. Jimmy, mm. we, we will be having our guests all uh, assembled in, uh, in, here in the studio as well as in our other network centers. We'll be asking several questions. For instance, how did the country fare, positively or negatively? How has 2019 defined the future of Nigerian politics? And how will politics play out in 2020? What will be the major political issues in that year? And as we said earlier on, what will be the outlook in 2020. Answers to these and more will be provided shortly on Good Morning Nigeria. Thanks for joining us. I am Jumwe Yusuf. And I'm Claire Adilabu Abdul Razak. This program is reaching you live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. And we pride ourselves to be the largest TV network in Africa. We're broadcasting live here in Abuja. We'll have a complimentary segment, a social newspaper review, business, sports, and entertainment. All will be coming your way in the next few hours. But first, Chimobi Water Naji is in the new studio. Chimobi, this is the first time we're seeing you this new year, so happy new year to you. Yes. <laughs> All right, happy new year to you, Claire. And uh, Jume, it's good to see you this morning. Good morning, Nigeria, and here is the morning news. The national chairman of the APC, Adam Sushomale, has described the New Year message by President Muhammadu Buhari to Nigerians as not only significant, but reassuring that the nation's upward trajectory for sustainable future is no fluke. Oshomale stated this after leading some members of the National Working Committee of the party to an audience with the president. 
we came essentially to assure the president that most well-meaning Nigerians are with him. They appreciate the hope. And the challenge now is to work hard to ensure that all of those promises that he has made, he will deliver in 2020, that we keep our word, because our word must be our bond with the people of Nigeria. And the federal government anti-corruption crusade is steadily gaining momentum as a number of high-profile convictions have been recorded. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed said this at a media briefing. This is not the first time Nigeria is fighting the canker worm of corruption. But it's the first time that the fight is being backed and sustained by a strong political will. With a president renowned for his honor, dignity, and incorruptibility, personally leading the fight. And that is making all the difference. We now turn our attention to labor matters as Nigerian federal workers have commended the present administration for keeping up to its promise of paying the new minimum wage and arrears. Now, this is coming after the week-long Christmas festival and other activities in the new year with little cash left in the hands of workers. I tried because <laughs> when uh, we heard that they were going to pay, we're not so sure so it's going to be, but later on we found out that it was true. So it's very commendable. The federal government have fulfilled their promises. They promised to pay the arrears, the new salary and the arrears in December, which they did. I received my own last week. That is the arrears of about 140 something thousand naira. And majority of us have gotten in my ministry, Ministry of Science and Technology, majority of us, about 90%. So we want to appreciate Mr. President for his job well done. And now to aviation, as the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sreka, says the earlier stipulated deadline for the completion of the rehabilitation works at the Akano Ibium International Airport, Enugu, is feasible given the level of work done so far. He was speaking while talking, while taking an inspection tour of the airport. And we're satisfied that the contractor is capable and competent enough to deliver this procurement. By our program of work, we will be delivering this runway, God willing, before Easter. The state will do all we need to do to make this thing work, because we know it's important. I also believe that um, the, the time or before Easter should also be achieved. Still on works on infrastructure, the following concerns by motorists plying the Ajokuta Itabe Bridge, which currently has a wide gap in one of the sections of the bridge. The Federal Controller of Works, Kogi State, Jimo Kajabola, says a team of engineers are being dispatched to the area to ascertain the immediate and remote causes of the problem and to replace the metal plates on the bridge. Kajabola, who was uh, speaking to NTA in a phone call, said there was no cause for worry and that the bridge is stable and is not collapsing. He adds that the joints are normal intersections on the bridge and that traffic has been diverted until the completion of the work. And now to judicial matters, as the Federal Capital Territory High Court sitting in Maitama has granted the application of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to extend the detention of the former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mohamed Bello Adoke, SAN, in its custody. The vacation judge, Justice Othman Musa, gave the order, giving, having taken a look at the ex parte application brought before the court by the EFCC counsel, Aisha Habib, the order is to keep the former Minister of Justice for additional 14 days pending his arraignment. The former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mohamed Bello Adoke, SAN, was arrested for alleged abuse of office and involvement in Malibu oil deal. And now to security. Troops of Operation Lafayette Dole and the Multinational Joint Task Force has rescued 165 victims from Boko Haram captivity. A statement by the Nigerian Army Operations Media Coordinator 
Colonel Aminu Ilyasu indicates that the victims, mostly women and children, were liberated during a clearance operation in northern Borno. Colonel Ilyasu notes that 75 suspected terrorists were arrested, others killed, arms and 15 cars recovered during the encounter. Similarly, repentant militants in Langtang, North and South local government areas of Plateau State have surrendered several arms to troops of forward operation base in Shandam, Plateau State. Now, that is the news for now. Good morning, Nigeria continues with Jume and Claire just after the break. Just stay with us. 20 years of travel and counting. 20 years of promoting tourism in Africa and diaspora. Over 3 million kilometers traveled. Over 30 African countries visited. Explored the diaspora in four continents. Connected over 100,000 happy tourists to Africa. Reached over 50 million homes. Igniting smiles across Africa and beyond. As Gogi Africa turns 20, we thank you and invite you to join us in the quest for 20 must-visit destinations in partnership with the largest TV network in Africa, the NDA, Ministry of Information and Culture, Ministry of Transportation, Lagos State Government, Kana, Delta Airlines, Royal Caribbean, Tour Brokers International. You too can still be a partner. Call the numbers on your screen or info at gogeafrica.tv. Goge Africa, celebrating two decades of heritage, travel and tourism. Ha! Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. Do you have a job where you're going to? Uh, no, but someone is arranging, you know... Listen, uh, listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh? Uh, you know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad or even end up in prison. My name is Giatu Adeza Adams, the General Manager, Corporate and Strategic Communications, Nigerian Port Authority. As regards the land borders closure, available statistical data from APMT, which is one of our terminal operators that is involved in container and handling the terminal, has recorded an increase of 200 TUs of cargoes into their terminal as a result of cargo diversion from the vessels originally meant for our neighboring countries. That shows you that the terminal operators is going to have an increase in revenue which is accrued to the terminal, and at the same time, Nigerian Port Authority will equally benefit from the revenue-led increase. So that is the benefit we will derive, or we have derived, from the border closure. Welcome back to Good Morning Nigeria. Newspaper review is next. Sorry for that slight mix-up there. Um, it does happen sometimes. But um, Baya Tobi is right here with us. Yes, Baya. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. Nigeria. 
All right, then. Let's uh, take off our newspaper review this morning with the Daily Trust newspaper and uh, very busy front page. I'll start with the lead story. 3,479 petitions filed in four election cycles. And this is despite reforms. That's the lead story. And uh, I want to see what exactly this graphic story is talking about. Um, okay, it is zone by zone election petitions. You can see it there. Zone by zone. The Southeast has a whooping 819, which uh, appears to be the highest from this uh, graphic uh, uh, story. South, South has more than 700. North Central, more than 500. Southwest, 524. Northwest, 460. Northeast, 323. And the FCT has only 26. Another interesting graphic display here, uh, just at the bottom. Election petitions from 2007 to 2019. Uh, you'll find the increase there by percentage, uh, or rather by numbers, between 2007 to 2019. And, um, well, uh, Bayo, what, uh, okay, there's another one, uh, electoral reforms since 2017 also, uh, we have uh, the permanent voters cards, we have the smart card readers, limitation of election campaign spending, and capacity building for electoral officials and judges sitting on election cases, and 180 days for determination of election petitions by tribunals, and indeed this is our main topic for today, today because yes. we're reviewing, you know, the political uh, uh, climate or the political outlook in 2019 and 2020 bio. What, what the, the data is showing is mm. that uh, gradually our politics is growing. Mm. Uh, you can see that in 20, 2007 there were as many as 1,282 petitions and gradually it's they reduced down. in 2011, although uh, the anxiety increased in 2019 and it decreased again from 663 that was there in 2015 to, to 807. Yes. But uh, indications are also that there are deliberate efforts as we progress uh, every four, four years to have electoral reforms to perfect or improve upon our electoral process. Mm. And one of the cardinal ones that everybody is looking forward to is to take advantage of electronic system, mm -hmm. particularly in the area of transmitting mm -hmm. election mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. Because most of the confusion come from, not from the polling units, but the transition mm -hmm. between polling units results to collation centers and final announcement. This is where you have the confusion, and most often than not, uh, the disputations that come from elections. So we are making progress. Our democracy is growing. You know, with regards to transmitting election results electronically, you know, some time ago I was in Cape Verde, as, as small as a country, you know, Cape Verde. Cape Verde transmits, I mean, you could just stay there and you see the results. And, and, and they have a database, you know, a, a place where election results are, you know, sent to, and from there the results are transmitted. So if a country like uh, Cape Verde mm. can do it, I mean, it doesn't matter because the excuse given is that the population, population yes, you know, but... Uh, no, no. Uh, Cape Verde, one of our smallest states in Nigeria is Bayelsa. Bayelsa mm. is certainly bigger than Cape Verde. Mm. So you can't compare this. So you can have how many Cape Verdes in one Nigeria. But it's not a question of size. It is the question of the technology exactly. and the ability mm. to cover the whole space. Before this election, INEC had intention, and they even had trial, of electronic transmission of results. Yes. They did that in some of the off-season elections. Mm -hmm. But for the general elections, they had challenges about satellite coverage because there were blind spots where you couldn't do that electronic transmission. Like and one critical and problem yeah. was there, there was a clause in the Constitution, uh, in the Electoral Act, that prohibits electronic uh, transmission of results. Mm -hmm. So that, if that, that clause is el eliminated. If it is amended, mm. then we are good to go between now and the next election. Uh, improvements and initiatives can be taken to ensure that we take a good advantage of that. We election. have elections coming up in Edo and Ondo State. Yeah, those are um, off-season yeah, yes, elections. Off -season, mm. But mm. The, it could be a, you know, a trial for all these electronic... Indeed, it before be 2019. Trial. Before, 20, before 2023. 2019, there were trials with some states. Yes. So it still could, could be part of uh, INEC 
perfecting mm. its measures about electronic. Mm. Uh, but, but still on this on this issue, because this is very important, mm. really. It's very important because this defines the quality of our democracy, whatever happens in our political system. And this, the Daily Trust has done a very good uh, uh, analysis, I must yeah. say, mm. uh, looking at some of the electoral reforms since 2017. Mm. Mm. That's uh, within the lifespan mm. of this administration. In, we have permanent voters' cards. Yes. We have smart card readers. We also have the introduction of limitation of election campaign spending bio, mm. which is very, very uh, yes. uh, impo important. And played and, a big role. Like, yes, uh, yes. And yesterday I was watching one of the international media outfits, mm. you know, uh, precisely uh, the US, where election, you know, uh, is, yes, yeah. are going on. And the issue of spending, sources of spending, Campaign how much spending. is being raised yeah. in terms of fundraising, you know, was the major important aspect and that was discussed. it's an open book there. And it's an open book, yes. exactly. It's an open well, book there. Uh, why, won't it be, why can't it be so in Nigeria? Well, the Electoral Act uh, provides for election expenditure limits. How to monitor that is the challenge for INEC. But be that as it may, as, as, as indicated, since... Our election commenced in 2007. Mm. There gradually, there have been some electoral reforms since uh, we came back to democracy in 1999. Because now we have democracy in practice outside where we had military regime. And so as we go ahead, as issues come up, so would our politicians and our legislators amend the Electoral Act and the Constitution to suit the democracy uh, as, if, as if daily trust was eavesdropping on what we're going to do today. Uh, <laughs> Actually, let's look at other stories on the front page of the paper. Uh, of course, it talks about the tension in Ilori over demolition of Saraki's yeah, house. Details yeah. of that on page three. Yeah. And then Mal Malami justifies Dasuki. She will raise the tension. You have this on page seven. Uh, I guess this was... Uh, um, you know, called from our conversation yesterday with yes. the yes. Attorney the, General. Yes, the Justice, Justice, Justice Attorney General of the Federation. Yeah. So, uh, kudos to Good Morning Nigeria. The information was given on that platform. Mm. The Minister was putting in context uh, the circumstances for obeying or how to go about obeying court orders. Mm. And kudos to Daily Trust for sourcing, you know, I mean, the, the, where, yes. where the, the, the data or giving credit, giving that credit is, to yes, the yes, source. Yes. Yes. Certainly. yes, the story you can find on page seven. Now, why I can't resign as APC chair? This is another interesting story to read. It's on page 49 and it's been attributed to uh, the national chairman himself, or Shomoli. Mm. Uh, uh, okay. Can we yes, look at Jimmy? Story Other stories the uh, at the bottom of the paper, or rather at the foot of the paper, all starts. 2020 higher on trade optimism amidst Middle East tensions. Yes. And that's on page 15. And twins abducted in Katsina village as police rescue uh, six on page four. Now military repels attack on Michika. Uh, you can find details of that on page eight. Jimmy. Yes, let's go now to the Punch newspaper just above the masthead. Accountant General queried over non-disclosure of 57 billion FG grants. That story is on page 25. And court extends Adoke's detention by 14 more days. That's on page 11. Boko Haram headsmen undermining agri-sector. Very sad story there. That's coming from the World Bank, and you find that on page 25. My life in danger over 2023 presidency. That's coming from the PDP board chairman. You find that on page 24. Just beside the nameplate of the Punch newspaper, very interesting story there, a shift in our political landscape. Why we are back in Southern presidency in 2023. That's coming from Northern Youths. Mm -hmm. You find that story on page, quite interesting, Claire. <laughs> find that story on page 19. Merchants defy CBN on 15 era POS charge. That story is on page 28. And the bold headlines there, the good news for civil servants across the country, minimum wage negotiations, labor soft battles as 15 states miss December 31 deadline. you find that story on page 2. With a rider, union gives state workers go ahead to continue talks. And just like uh, Claire read uh, in the Daily Trust newspaper, Quara demolishes Saraki's house, houses on revoked land. Group kicks against it. You find that story on page 12, and you can see the picture story there. And um, monarchs, others knock Akume for attacking, attacking Tortive. 
you find that on page 9. I started planning Abuja bank robbery in October. That's coming from the bank banker who connived with the bankers. I think it was a Saturday robbery. Seriously? Last, yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, October. Yes. You find that storage on page four and five. And villagers pelted Abuja Kaduna train with stones, not gunshots. That's coming from the Nigerian Railway Commission. I, you know, against the story that the, the, the train was attacked yesterday. Mm -hmm. One one of my friends was telling me, I said, no, no, as long as I don't see it on NTA, I would not believe it. Indeed, indeed. A passenger, yes. a passenger uh, who claimed to be on that train mm -hmm. posted it on the social media that this is not true. This is not a true picture of what had happened. Happened. You, you understand? And, I mean, I, I wonder where we get our stories. Stories. Well, Fake news. I think that is why we need I mean, a law like that in, in Nigeria. Get your facts there, right. Yes. There is a get the danger. facts right before you post. There is a danger with fake news. And with social media, mm. that danger is expanded in the sense that the social media has ability to, to go far in, in, by way of reach. Mm. Now, two papers are reporting the same story. Mm. Punch is confirming that that train was attacked. And it was not a gunshot. Rather, it was a stone that was thrown by boys after the train had left uh, Rigasa at Katari. Mm. However, the managing, they called the managing director of Nigerian Railway, yes. uh, Fidel Ohiria, as saying that, no, there was no gunshot, but maybe it was some boys that hold stones. Mm. But the, the, uh, the man who is in charge of the Abuja Kaduna train mm. uh, also mm. confirmed that this is a recycled information. The stone incident happened several, a year or so ago. And yes. it was only brought forward as if it happened now, and that there was no truth in the fact that the train was attacked. So the point reported that yes, there was a boys who were holding stones at it, and the Daily Trust is reporting that the same authorities, the managing director said yes. there was no such thing. Yes, Daily Trust has it mm. on 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 its uh, on the page six, yeah. and just to quote a a, a, a a paragraph or so from there, it says the Nigerian Railway Corporation NRC has dismissed reports of attack on the Abuja Kaduna train, saying it was complete fake news. He said, uh, according to the public relations, uh, Mr. Mahmoud Yakub uh, said the reported attack was a uh, was mischief, uh, um, was bent on scaring passengers. This is complete fake news. Nobody attacked the train. And he goes on to say that, um, and this is because none of the passengers, he said no passenger has given any report of an attack, whether from Abuja or the Regaza axis in Kaduna. But, and this is but, coming uh, from... And the version from the point is that the coach that was attacked was coach SP-12, and it had the uh, glass shattered. And it's, gun, the same SP12, and it's the same mm. SP-12 that is being referred to here. So, I mean, where are we getting this? You see, yeah. this, this type of story, uh, Bio, mm -hmm. gives credence to, you know, plans for regulation yes. of the social media. You know, sometimes we kick against such plans, but when you hear such fake news, I mean, you have no choice. The, the danger for, that I want to point out here is to our colleagues, journalists, yes. don't take stories from the social media, hook, lie, and sinker. Otherwise, yes. you undermine your own integrity, integrity. and believability because the, the point is reporting that his correspondent confirmed this report. Yes, even on Saturday when they told me about, somebody called me, there's a bank robbery, I said, I have not seen it on our network reports. I mm. wouldn't believe it until I see it. Bio, mm. oil starts 2020 higher on trade optimism and means escalation of tension, tension in the middle east. east. You, you, I'm sure you must have heard what happened yesterday. Yes. Uh, well, because the Middle East is the nexus for oil export, mm. if anything happens there that uh, disrupts the peace there, mm. there is a tendency that oil price might begin to shut up. Mm. And that is the optimism people are expecting. Mm. And the expectation is that probably Nigeria will be among the oil exporting countries that could benefit from such a thing. We don't hope for any crisis mm. for us to benefit, but uh, peace in the world is better for all of us. Yes. Uh, it, it is in contrast with uh, the topic there, which I think we will be going on to in the yes, editorial. Yes, that's for the editorial. Yes. You know, we are yes. looking uh, for good economic outlook in 2020, and that's coming from the Sun newspaper. And I, I read from the first intro, Nigerians mark the new year with great expectations. They want improvement in all sectors of the economy. Such optimism that things will turn out fine will be reflected 
in the management of the economy. Despite the optimism, emerging key microeconomic indicators for 2020 suggest that the economic outlook might not be so good. And now talking about the Middle East crisis and we're talking about the present oil price, you know, in the international markets, about 60 US dollar per barrel, three dollars above government projected project, uh, benchmark mark compared to the same period within the past four years. This is the best start for the economy since 2015, if sustained for the rest of the year. Also, the level of oil production is at a four-year high here in Nigeria at the beginning of the new year at 2 million barrels per day daily. So do you think the Middle East crisis will, you know, sort of change the narrative in 2020? So well? by way of oil production, uh, the information the Honorable Minister of Information gave recently was that oil production, for instance, as far as Nigeria is concerned, We've had our highest two million barrels uh, per, per day, per day and yes. also about two trillion mm -hmm. by way of uh, output from oil. But don't forget that our economy, the intention is deliberately diversifying mm -hmm. from oil towards agriculture, mining, and other, mm -hmm. uh, other potentials that mm -hmm. we have in our nation. Mm -hmm. That is to make sure that we go away from the oil. That notwithstanding, oil still remains the mainstay of the economy. Mm -hmm. But there is a deliberate attempt. However, the editorial was happening of some of the negative uh, microeconomic reports yes. indicated by central bank and is cautioning that we have to be very careful so that we we are not caught up in God, our yeah. higher expectation mm. for the uh, out economic outlook for 2020. 2020. All right, Bayo, that's, uh, it's on that. No, we didn't have a business, so we had extended time mm. for you. Thank so, you. <laughs> you say good things coming for you in the yes. day, yeah? yeah. <laughs> All right, please do go and have fun. We'll you and a wonderful yes. weekend. Yes, Enjoy. and a wonderful weekend. Oh, today is Friday. Yes, oh. thank God it's Friday. <laughs> All right, we'll see you on Monday. Monday. All right, then, Ryo, have Thanks. a good weekend. This mm. is Good Morning Nigeria. If you've just joined us, you're watching it live on the network service of the NTA. Our conversation today, we're continuing our review, and today, this edition will focus on the political outlook for 2020. Join us again. <laughs> They swore an oath to serve our fatherland and defend the people. They traded their freedom, comfortable homes and mortgaged their lives on the battleground for our unity and peaceful living. These are the great, fearless, loyal and committed Nigerian armed forces who risked their lives courageously to safeguard our borders. But in the line of duty, many never returned. Nigerians, arise, let's celebrate our fallen heroes. Put on the remembrance emblem with pride to support the incapacitated and families of our fallen heroes. It is indeed befitting to honor the memory of the gallant hearts of the men who paid the supreme sacrifice President Muhammad Buhari joins all ministries, parastatals, religious and corporate bodies to donate generously to the Emblem Appeal Lunch. Send your donations to these accounts. Account name, Emblem Appeal Lunch. Account number, 393-200-7526. Ecobank Nigeria PLC. Nigeria is our country and it's the only country we have. Irrespective of religion, tribe, the heroes of our past did their best to take Nigeria to where it is today. It would be unfortunate, I repeat, unfortunate, absolutely, if we don't keep Nigeria intact. We must put our differences behind. We must let everybody know that human beings cannot live together without some differences. But at the end of the day, our country is Nigerian. It must always come first. Get ready for the Unity Challenge Reality TV Show. Coming soon. We have come to the end of another successful year and we wish to appreciate all those that mean so much to us. Our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, and above all, you, our esteemed viewer. Together, we made 2019 great. Together, we shall make 2020 even greater. That is why we say thank you. This is wishing you Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year.
Welcome back to Good Morning Nigeria. Oyeyemi Ajayi was on the street to fill the polls of Nigerians on the political outlook for 2020 and a retrospect on 2019. Mr. President is doing good and uh, I expect him also to continue in terms of fighting corruption. We have to fight corruption not only in the, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, public sector, we have to go to the private sector also and fight this corruption. Good thing they have passed a good budget, which will, be in the, uh, which will go a long way in addressing some issues. But most importantly is uh, that of uh, insurgents. I mean, government should try as much as possible to, to create more jobs for the youth. Because so many people finish the university, there's no job for them. The government should try and uh, create job opportunity for the, the youth. The government are trying. But they just need to put more effort. Just trusting God that we'll have a good political year. Nigerians will be blessed in this year. And things will work well for the government, for the masses, for everybody. The president of Nigeria, I hope he will, he will do his best to deliver the voters' promise he made. So we hope 2020 will be a, a, a good chance for him and a progress to the life of the citizens of this country. All right, thank you for joining us. So let's get started by introductions. First, let me welcome to our studio in Abuja. Uh, she's a familiar face, distinguished Senator uh, Irat Guadabe, who is chairperson Senators Forum. Uh, distinguished Senator, thank you very much for joining us and good morning, Nigeria. Thank you. And compliments of the season. Same with you. I also have here with us also a well known face, uh, a friend of the house, Abdullahi Adamu Kandido and his chairman, Abuja Municipal Area Council, and we call him the powerful chairman. Yes. <laughs> Good to see you, chairman. Good morning, Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Uh, we you. also have uh, other guests. We'll introduce them. But first, I think Joss is ready. Uh, professor Dungpam Shah, he's a professor of political economy and development studies, Department of Political Science, University of Jaws. Uh, former HOD Political Science, also University of Jaws, Deputy Dean, School of Postgraduate Studies, and former director of research, University of Jaws. Professor Shah, thank you for joining us. All right, we have other guests. They will introduce them as soon as uh, they get the join us. Yes, uh, join us yes. um, Jume, you want us to start? Let's start yes. with, okay, we have two politicians here. Uh, let, let me start with, uh, I'm sorry, gender, gender sensitive. With the lady, ladies <laughs> first. Well, let's yeah. start with the lady. Uh, distinguished Senator, you were part of the you know, 2019 election. Just share with us first of all, what was it really like for you to contest? Well, it's always a pleasure to contest. I, that's the best part of, um, for me personally, it, that's the best part of the, the democratic process for me. I find when you go out and engage with people, you feel their pulse. You feel the way they respond to what you have to say. And then you find the excitement. Sometimes when you first address a crowd, they are apprehensive. You, when you look at their faces, some of them are not read. They're there with hostility to challenge what you have to say. And as you speak, begin to address them, I just look at their faces changing. And gradually, the smiles come on. And gradually, you see them laughing. <laughs> and at the end of it, I ask for questions. And you know, they will reply you with, they will come up with questions that are very interesting. It shows, at the end of it, you see that they have been following the conversation. They have been following what you're saying. And they want to relate it to circumstances that affect them. For instance, let me give you an example. You, you, when I was in Kuali, um, one of the groups that came asked a question that, okay, now, you've said all of this, you've done all of this for us. Why is it that after you, our lands have been taken? What were you doing for us after? What did you do for us after? So they were politically aware? Oh, yes. So that threw me. I'm like, OK, fine. In this dispensation, you are there to represent people. Once you've been given the opportunity to represent, then, and the tenure is over, it will be 
very assuming of you to say you are continuing to step into that position of representation if they have re elected a, another representative. However, you can step into the avenue or arena of NGOs and other ways of assisting, but your voices are not as strong. So they had to understand that the choice is theirs. If you want continuity of anything, you fight to retain that continuity. And that is the right of the in electorate. In terms of the quality of 2019 political you know, uh, uh, atmosphere, what readily comes to your mind? The first stage that was quite, it was honestly, votes counted. Votes counted. And because votes counted, we were able to engage people. People came out because they were sure that their votes would count and they were not afraid to be, to be at the polling unit and wait. I'm talking generally from my perspective and where we voted and, you know, if only I could show pictures of the crowd that was at the polling unit. So for me, my take home from that, INEC did a wonderful job, honestly. And the statement of the president that he assured Nigerians that all votes will count. Their votes will count, and that was reflected in seeing people. I didn't see violence in any of the places I went to, and the turnout reflects that. Okay, thank you so much. Now, coming to Abdullah Adamu, candidate chairman of Abuja Municipal Area Council, you've contested so many elections. Mm -hmm. What makes 2019 elections stand out? Thank you very much. Uh, I think. Uh, my leader, the senator here, uh, said it clearly. The last election, 2019, the votes count. Except for the fact that uh, mischief makers in the position of uh, opposition, sometimes they go into this election with a mindset, oh, we're going to win this election. You ask them reasons, they were alluded to personal views and opinions or known to them, this is not the mind of the voters. And so the moment something else happens, they now turn around to say, oh, the election was rigged. Oh, Mr. President did not meant his words. Uh, he assured us of free and fair election. It never come to pass, and so many things. It is only when they are in the opposition that they have this impression, okay? Once they did not win, they have it in mind that, oh, they were rigged. So I think uh, what we saw in, that last, uh, in the last election was that uh, people really troop out because I was all around since I'm, you know, the election you know, comes and ends from the local areas. Yeah. And so we have access to the people, the people have access to the government, and the INEC does excellent job. Mm -hmm. But like I'm saying, the, the views expressed by opposition Okay, and wanting the international, the global society to assume or to, 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 to hear them out, thinking things are bad in this country. This is essentially what some of us looked at. And we think uh, the next election, okay, looking at what Mr. President has further promised, mm -hmm. I think Nigerians should really look at the mindset and the body language of Mr. President because he meant well for this nation. Okay. And so opposition shouldn't just cry out and just believe that, oh, once they are in the opposition, then the victory is there, thinking that is what the minds, uh, the people have in mind. Okay, let's bring in our guest from uh, our JOS uh, studio, Professor uh, Dung Pam Shah, who is a professor of political economy and development studies. Prof, a compliment of the season to you. Uh, you've listened to the distinguished senator and, of course, uh, AMAC chairman. Both believe that 20, 2019 election, uh, of course, uh, produce some positives in terms of one, they've both agreed that voting counted and they've given INEC pass mark. But in terms of the behavior or fortunes for politicians and political parties, how would you rate each of them? Um, thank you very much. Um, I greet you all from the cold city of Jaws. Jaws is very, very cold today. Um, I think we must be very fair to this country uh, by engaging in very deep analysis that would help us, you know, to develop. 
Um, from 1999, I think we set in place quite a number of institutions, uh, practices, procedures, which, which help us to realize that it's, it's good to develop as a country politically. And I think we, 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 we did that, we saw progress, uh, people accepted you know, to move with the, with, with the um, democracy train. And uh, civilians, you know, were really the backbone, you know, of this development. So I, I, I think that that's something that one should um, give a plus uh, to this, the um, citizens of this country. But I think that the gradually from 1999, we started seeing the retreat or what some people have called, you know, the recession that has gone into politics, that we're not really seeing much of what we thought 1999 um, created the foundation for. And so 2019 was, was a year that uh, people lamented very seriously about uh, the progress that um, the country in, in, you know, had made. It, it, it really marked you know, the reversal you know, of what we jubilated uh, for creating um, in terms of the uh, politics of the country. Um, I, I agree that turnout was, was, was very large, and we have, we have done studies in order to show that turnout was very large. Lost our um, okay. violence, you know, took place. Um, we, we had a very... Yeah. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, sorry about that. We've lost signal from Joss. We do hope to reconnect with Joss and continue our conversation with mm -hmm. Professor Pam Cha. But mm -hmm. he was talking about the a um, uh, 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 gradual you know, development from 1999 and a huge expectation. Uh, distinguished Senator Irat, with all the buzzing of the political campaigns and, and all you know, that happened in 2019, because we're looking at 2019 you know, and, and going forward to 20, uh, 2020 now, where were we exposed in terms of upholding best practices? Where did we falter? He was going to say that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, for me, um, having been a participant in 1999 and um, hearing him talk about the gains of where we were in 1999. 1999, we came, the political scene was different. We were coming from taking over from the military to a new democratic uh, dispensation and the excitement was very, very high. And the parties that contested at that time contested very, very keenly also. And of course, we didn't have all these electronic systems then. And you could see that even that result was challenged at the courts. Mm -hmm. So that itself um, shows our, our culture, our political culture, that results will always be challenged. Um, thank God for the, um, the court system, because if there wasn't an opportunity to challenge, you can imagine what the, the downside of that would be. However, moving away from that, the economic situation and the issues on the ground in 2019 were quite different from those of the, um, um, 19, 1999. And those issues were quite salient. Mm -hmm. And when you, subsequent elections from 1999, the issues that came on board were quite crucial. By 2020, sorry, 2003, mm -hmm. the issues were issues of whether you were satisfied with the performance of the president then mm -hmm. and you wish him to continue. And within the party of PDP, the, the primaries were keenly contested. So much so that the first time you see the, um, at the Eagle Square, the lining up of all the ballot papers and how they kind of introduce a manipulative system of voting to make sure that the presidential candidate, the sitting president emerged. Now, at the general elections of 2023, sorry, uh, nine, 20, uh, 20, 2003. 2003, thank you. At that point, the issues were do we still want a president that will continue to interfere with the other arms of uh, institutions of government, particularly the legislative arm? And that, those were the issues at that time. And do we want a president that would not um, listen to, would continue to do things that are 
um, unconstitutional. So that was what was what being plague. was at plague. And the results went the way it went again. And you saw that was when General Buhari mm. challenged, uh, came into the uh, arena, arena. And it was keenly contested. You talked about the economic uh, climate or outlook then and how it probably affected what happened in 2019. Yes. yes. Now, to elaborate on that, by the time if the economic activities in 2015 mm -hmm. that affected the results of the elections of 2015 provided a platform where the expectation was high. Citizens were expecting that the change that was being promised by the campaign would now galvanize straight to the promised land. Yet the change that came, came and faced an empty treasury, so to speak. So they couldn't crank the engine to move fast enough. And that dictated the slow pace of economic expectation. And that was now the, the thread of the theme of that government. And by 2019, people were now saying the economy, the economy, the economy. And that was what the issues were. Do we want a president to continue the economic policy that we don't see the improvement? Or do we want him to continue this economic, uh, give him a chance to make it really crank and be successful? So those were the issues we were faced with. And being faced with those issues, the second issue that we're faced with is, do we want to believe those that we had discredited, the party we had discredited in 2015, do we want to believe that they have changed and we're going to believe what they're selling? So those issues were now an issue of economy, the candidates, and what the individuals wanted. And how do these two candidates impact on our lives? That was why you found that keen competition. You know, and uh, we'll, now, we'll now be going back to Joe. Yes, let's get, get returned to Joss. Uh, thank God we, uh, we've uh, gotten our signals back, thanks yes. to our engineers. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Professor, um, Professor Duncan Shah, we're very sorry we had to, or signals had to jolt you out of your mind's tra trajectory. But let's remind you, you are trying to uh, evaluate, uh, you know, progress made in the political uh, uh, system since 1999 and now. Please, could you continue uh, from where you stopped? Thank you very much. I, I was making the point that um, 20, 2019 was not a good story for Nigeria. And I think we have to be very frank on this. Uh, when, when, when I say that if we're making an analysis you know, of our own country, let's do the analysis you know, as patriots, as people who would, who would want this country to move forward. There were, there were quite a number of things that went wrong. And I think um, even uh, the, the, uh, the current establishments you know, within the um, current regime you know, have accepted that some of the things that, that, that um, happened went wrong. <clears throat> the elections were, yes, like I said, people trooped out you know, to go and vote. Which, which demonstrated you know, their interest in supporting democracy and making the system grow. But I think that uh, the, the, the various political actors didn't play roles that would you know, help the system to uh, move forward. Um, when um, our senator said you know, violence you know, was not witnessed in her own area where she voted, uh, that does not really mean that you know, violence was not witnessed in other uh, parts of the country. We've done some analysis you know, of the patterns of violence you know, in this country, and it is quite clear that those um, areas that witnessed violence, political violence, you know, had very serious impact, you know, on electoral outcomes. Um, if you speak to INEC, you know, INEC will tell you that they were unable even to reach some areas because of violence. Um, so the, the attitude of the political class, I think, um, is, is, is something that we need to um, uh, think, uh, I mean, to, to, to um, uh, interrogate and uh, um, also tell them the truth about how this country um, should move forward. I am aware that within that political class, there's, there's um, a group of them that would, would nationally want you know, to move forward. But there are other groups that really don't want things to move forward. They want to do the same thing on and on in order just to keep power. 
Um, so I think that 2019 was not a good story for Nigeria, and that's why I explained earlier that we saw a kind of reversal you know, in the gains that we had you know, achieved since 1999. I thank um, um, Senator for bringing us back and telling us the, the, the um, um, historical patterns you know, of leadership and also governance. And, and it's very clear that within those regimes, we'll see that people were interested, especially those who were asking for electoral reforms. President Yaradua was interested in that. There were those who came and said, no, electoral reforms cannot take place, especially towards um, 2019 elections when we were expecting um, some reforms um, to be done to the electoral system so that we can move on you know, as a country like other countries. But it, it wasn't. I listened to the, I, I, I read the speech of Mr. President on, on uh, January 1st. You know, we, he alluded to the fact that, yes, there were problems um, in, in um, 2019, uh, but there was no really solution that he said, look, we need to reform the system. And I thought that that is the way you know, we should go, by saying, okay, we had noticed problem-solving leadership is about looking at problems and knowing how to solve them and willing to solve them as well. So if we have identified the problem, we should now see that, look, in the next few five years, we're going to put in place one, two, three reforms, you know, so that these uh, um, problems can be um, resolved. I noted that in his um, um, a speech, whether it was a speech or a letter, people um, um, give names to what has, has, has been published um, differently. That, yes, the economy is, is one of the factors that have to be addressed. And uh, of course, the issue of corruption, you know, is, is, is there, which, which, which is good. But we must take steps to uh, make programs that will help us address these issues, rather than um, um, making the point look as if everything, you know, has been solved. I mean, every problem has been solved, you know, in this country. So I, I, I thought that if we start, you know, our discussion on the basis of saying that we as citizens, uh, we must address this country as citizens and uh, with, with, with the interest of moving forward, that will be a better way, you know, of looking of our, I mean, looking at our own country. I think what we we, we need to point out as, as as well is that the subsequent elections, since we are discussing politics now, the subsequent elections that took place in Bayelsa and also uh, uh, Kogi was also not a good story of this country. Uh, to say that, look, we are a democratic nation, we are developing. Uh, the, the kind of things that happen, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if we, are going to, if, if we are going to actually replicate this in, in uh, 2023, uh, then we will not move forward in, in, you know, as a country. And, and we'll give the chance for people who are making uh, uh, suggestions that probably we may have um, uh, issues of, 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 of breaking up. Or God forbid, we do not want that. But you see, when we put in place ideas, uh, models, you know, procedures that will help this country move forward, you know, all of us, and, and, and this is also a very inclusive, then we're going to move forward you know, as a country. So um, yes, in terms of analysis, I like how we've started it, but let's discuss it you know, as nationalists. Uh, Dr. Michelle, thank you. You've raised some issues. First, uh, let me also remind you that in the letter, you know, to Nigerians by President Muhammadu Buhari, he did say he would, he was standing down from, you know, future elections, but that there was a proviso there that he was going to help to assist to strengthen the electoral process both within and outside the country. I thought I should point that out. And also, I was thinking that wasn't your opening remarks a sweeping generalization because we know that apart from pockets of violence, that's, uh, you know, as it, it, it's been described uh, during the 2019 elections, we've had opening up of the political space. And that's why I'm returning back to the studio here uh, to bring in the AMAC chairman who also, you know, was a participant in the 2019 elections. So could you just give us your own perspective in terms of the politicians, the main actors and the political parties, you know, how uh, 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 their, their behavior during the 2019 elections? Thank you very much, Claire. I think uh, uh, by October this year, Nigeria will be 60 years of independence. And uh, having come this far, we must try to tell ourselves the naked truth. We have moved forward and backward this last 60 years. And that's why things are not the way we you know, expected them to be. 
Uh, having been a participant in elections, sometimes as a supporter, sometimes as a candidate, sometimes ordinarily as a party member, uh, I think I've come to terms with reality that uh, our conduct in, pol in the political space may not have been too good because we pretend too much. Our conduct by our who? Conduct, Electorate, the conduct political of, parties? Or the, the, the two. Or both the candidate for every election and even the supporters. My leader is here, for instance. Every supporter of a party knows a candidate that may likely deliver. But that is not what that, the people don't look at who can deliver. They look at who gives. Okay? Who gives you what at a particular time? At that point in time, that is just what is, you know, the concern of the electorate. So at the end of the day, when you fail, who do you now blame? You have refused to identify yourself or your vote with the candidate that can deliver, give you service that you needed. Instead, you go for a peanut that is just ordinarily for that moment. And then at the end of the day, you fail. And then you come out after the, after the exercise, you come out crying. That is what I mean, I, I, I mean by the conduct. We always deceive ourselves. We don't tell ourselves the naked truth. Who is this that can deliver? Let's all come out and give him the mandate so he can come out and give us what is expected of us. This essentially is what I said. But having said all yeah, this... So basically, you're talking about the political awareness of the electorate. Exactly. The political knowledge that the electorate have. Whose responsibility is it to, you know... Uh, uh, there is an arm of government. educate the electorate. There is an arm of government. That is the National Orientation Agency. They may not be politicians, of course, but they are supposed to really, by their mandate, sensitize and ensure that the people exactly know what is around them and what they are supposed to do at a particular point in time. In election times, we are expected to be seen, identifying with not ordinarily just looking at a political party, but a person who can deliver. For instance, if you look at Mr. President, okay, this is somebody who even without a political party, and if we are sincere with ourselves, we can deliver and win an election without even standing under the platform of any political party. Because of his past, because of his antecedent, because of his person, he can win election even without a political party. So what should be the role of the political parties and the politicians themselves? That, that is what I'm saying. Linking up with the NOAA agenda and mandate. Okay? Political parties are not supposed to synergize with all institutions so that Nigerians are better informed. So that when we are coming for an election like this, we should be able to identify who can deliver. That is the most important thing. And if after 60 years, we are yet to be where we are, then I don't know where else, when else we're supposed to be. Because when Mr. President may have, will leave office in, 20, uh, in 2023, okay? And then if we're not able to, you know, ensure that somebody closer or even better than him comes to take over from him, right? If we have just a docile leader, who just because of maybe what he has and what have you, then he becomes a president after this, after Mr. President. We'll be, go, we'll be, get, we'll be going back to the 20s. And that is not what, what, what we are praying. So I expected that Nigerians should reawaken themselves. Our conduct, we should tell ourselves the naked truth. That is just my emphasis. Let us identify what is the best around us and give him the mandate. And then he deliver for us. Because we can't continue to lament. And uh, just get this, see this example. From, I don't know when this Boko, uh, this Boko Harams went and s took away this, uh, um, this, this young girl in Chibok. Mm -hmm. This is al almost close to 10 years now or so, or more than that. If these children are ours, right, how do you feel for 10 years and you don't have your children around? Okay, how do you feel? Now, if all the effort that government from from Jonathan Steno till date, we are yet to identify where even these girls are. What, how, how do you feel? We, you as a father or as a mother, and you cannot see your child for over 10 years. How do you feel it? Now, when they come out to cry, you thought, you thought, sometimes you blame the military, sometimes you blame the parents. So you are laying okay. this at the, at, the, at the doorstep of the political actors. Of course. We don't, you see, let me tell you, most of the political actors, who likely may come from the area that we have this uh, uh, issue, most of them know where this, uh, this, uh, the, the, the activists are uh, involved in this Boko Haram. Okay. But what mm -hmm. do we do? We should tell ourselves the naked truth. Where can we get these children to be out? Who can we touch? Who can we even talk to? So that, please, release mm -hmm. these children. Okay, uh, okay. since, 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 since we are not really talking so about... how do we shift from, how do we, you know, shift from this kind of politics, you know, going into, this is 2020, we have some elections coming up, and um, security plays a very key role 
in politics. Yeah. Without security, politics and democracy itself cannot thrive. So how do we take a step away from all this violence and money politics? Because that is what causes the violence in the first place, is the money. That, Everybody wants a share of the national cake. And that is exactly what I'm saying. Yes. The mindset of the citizens should be reshaped. Okay, we should talk to Nigerians to exactly know what is it that is bothering us. Let us stop pretending. We may be too religious, but I want to tell you that in the entire world, we are more sinners. Yes. Okay? We, are, we, need, we need just to tell ourselves the naked truth. Having seen who we are in this last 60 years or so, okay? Looking at Nigeria bef before, be be before independence, mm. some people who lived at that, around that time will tell you that Nigeria was better off, even under colonial administration. But now that we are administering ourselves, are we better off? We, to, we, we pretend yes, too we much. <laughs> like, well, 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 that's, that's well, a very now, rhetorical yes, question. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. that's a, a rhetorical question. And, and uh, Jume has raised the issue of you know, security and, and, of course, politics. Mm. You, you can't really divulge, yeah, you know, the, yes, mm. the security from politics. Um, distinguished Senator, I, I'd just like to ask you, that again points to ideology. If you, if you don't have an ideology, a distinct ideology, governance is probably done haphazardly. So the 2019 produce any distinct ideological block? Well, um, politics of Nigeria usually in the 60s was largely based on ideology, um, where you had Nepal and so on and so forth. Um, as it kind of moved along, ideology took a different shape. In 99, the ideology was civilian against democracy against the military. The military. Um, in, in between then till now, the 20 years in between, the various elections have not truly been on an ideological basis. But however, we can expand the definition of ideology to say, yes, the ideology of stomach infrastructure in some places, if I may quote the famous uh, governor that said that, um, the ideology of peace in other places, people vote for, for on security issues, and some vote on the issue of continuity. These were just the peripheral um, ideology. Now, when we are going to assess 2019 elections, it is best to seg separate the elections. You had the National Assembly elections. You have the State Assembly elections. You have the presidential elections. And even though those national elections were on the same day, the results were interesting in places. Where you are having presidential election and national assembly elections in some constituencies, they, some constituencies returned wholly voting for one party. But the candidates in all the pres both presidential, uh, parliamentary, and uh, state, they all they all belong to parties, yes. and parties and parties operate based on ideology. Mm. Yes, yeah. but Nigerians tend to go for personalities, and that is reflected when you look at the results in polling units of those combined elections. So you can find in some states where governor is in party A and half of his assembly are party B. Mm. Is that the ideology mm. of the parties they're voting for? And it's the same day election, mm. the same people voting. Same. So, the, and different ballot papers, they would rather vote for X than Y in that party. Mm. Now, is it a vote of confidence on the ideology of the party? Or are they telling you they're voting for personalities? So for me, it's personalities they largely vote for. And as a result, you find the level of returnees at the national assemblies of one particular party getting the majority dictates the tone of the direction the people want to go from their respective constituencies. Mm -hmm. And when you now see them seated, the aggregate National Assembly members must now represent truly in their voting system within the National Assembly the voices of their constituencies collectively with a view of delivering dividend of democracy for the country. Now, people have said 
that the National Assembly is kind of a rubber stamp. Mm -hmm. That's not the issue, being a rubber stamp. They, they might use the word rubber stamp thinking that because majority are in the same party and they want to go with their party um, ideology, mm -hmm. everything that the president wants is what they will go. It doesn't follow like that because issues are debated. Mm -hmm. And every member, when he's putting a vote, is remembering what his constituents really want. And that's the way they vote for the country. Yes. But on the whole, when you look at the state assembly, the state elections on the election day, the, the difference in voting of the complete results of presidential elections and the state elections is quite interesting. You find mm. in states where you had um, majority votes for party A, they now end up voting for party B as their governor and their um, as state assembly. And because they're doing that, your, the point is, how are they reflecting the interests of the people? That is what is key. Nigerians are not completely unpatriotic. But like um, the chairman said, we need to orientate our people better. We, they need awareness more than they're getting. We need more patriots in this country. Where every, it, that's why it ties the, to the economy. You can't run away from the economy and election results. And until we are able to get our people to understand that the moment you vote for a person, mm. you do not give up your rights as to demanding for good governance. Mm. It's a two-way. But in the tendencies, you vote for anyone and the person has re resumed, mm. you, you just go back and do your business and you feel ah, they'll just do what they like. Mm. No, it is incumbent on us. You have to hold them accountable. Yes for accountability yes. and consistent engagement mm. so that they themselves are not saying they know all the answers. Mm. But if you don't engage elected person, uh, officers, how do they know precisely where they're airing and precisely the voices of mm. the people? Because it's dynamic. And as months go by and that runs into years, the situation of 2019 is going to be different from the situation of 2020. Okay. 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 Yes. I'm going let's, into, to, let's talk about internal, because all the things you've been talking about is like there's, in, you know, internal party politics yes. seems to have taken over the political landscape. And um, in 2019, we saw a lot of, you know, upsets <laughs> with one-term governors. Are we saying that Nigerians now are, now, are not longer looking at personalities, but telling the politicians that we are tired, if you cannot deliver, we kick you out. Is that what happened in 2019? You see, there were quite some upsets, actually. Yes, you see a lot of that play in. You know, po politics is dynamic. Yes. In some constituencies, we can't generalize. Yes. Different constituencies have their um, idiosyncrasies. Mm. In some constituencies, oppositions and ruling party come together to vote for opposition party. Yes because of the candidate that emerges. Now, when you have the internal politics um, within the party, mm -hmm. if the process has been perceived to be unfair, vindictive, okay. then you will get opposition voting on the general election day. Mm -hmm. But where it is free and fair, and the voices of party members mm -hmm. have been reflected in the process, even if their candidates did not emerge, and it was free, fair, and to them generally they've been appeased, then they will work for the party and not good for the opposition, mm -hmm. and even get, encourage opposition to work with them. These are the things you begin to see. Largely, in this country, it is personalities people vote for. And also, if you're not voting for that personality, you may be supporting that personality That's because it. of his godfather yes. or All godmother. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, distinguished. Let's, let's put you on hold mm -hmm. and bring in Professor Dung Pam Shah. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor uh, Pam Shah, you, you've listened to the distinguished and the AMAC chairman. Uh, the distinguished is saying, see, uh, we probably have not evolved a distinct ideology. That's uh, talking about the political parties mm -hmm. yet. And that's why the political culture now is still 
you know, person, is, is personality based. From your perspective, over the years, we've had people talk about social, you know, safety nets, you know, doing more of social safety nets or welfare risk policy. We also have, in the last election, a, a, a lot more talk on, you know, what we probably call liberal, you know, capitalism and all that. Do they suggest <clears throat> any pattern of ideology at all? Yeah, um, let me respond to one of your earlier comments, then I'll, I'll, I'll come to this. Um, I, I was not making a sweeping generalization, you know, of the issue of violence. Um, when Senator talked about um, nonviolence in an area which, she, you know, she participated in elections, I said that we've done some other studies, you know, to show that there were uh, various patterns, you know, of violence in the, in the, uh, the, the different zones, you know, of the country. Um, there were locations that were so remarkable, you know, for for for, for um, violence. So it, it is it's, it's not it's not really sweeping. Um, some violence indeed, you know, took place, and that affected the outcome, you know, of the um, um, the elections. And we're thinking that we must pay attention to this factor in subsequent elections. How do we um, reduce, you know, the scale of violence? Um, how do we ensure that the security, instead of uh, uh, paying attention you know, to issues of security, participate in actually uh, reducing the quality of the elections, uh, which that has been seen in uh, Bayelsa and um, Abkogi. Um, to the question of ideology. Uh, uh, I guess it's, it's the weather in yeah. Jos. I, I hear it's quite cold there. Nine uh, degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Shah, we'll return to you as soon as again we reconnect with you. But let's get back to the studio here yes. and uh, where the um, and, all right, Prof. Prof thank. Please do continue. Well, now we have to come back to the studio where mm. Abdullah Adamu Candido is waiting. We're talking about Nigerians being aware of their rights as the electorate and holding the elected officials accountable. Do you think? That is, you know, becoming possible in Nigeria. Can the electorate hold the elected accountable for whatever they do while they are in office? It's very, it's very imperative and very necessary that uh, electorates this time around uh, must always hold those they elected into office accountable. <coughs> uh, going should be those days where you vote and then you forget the person. At the end of it, where you come and say, oh. Uh, we leave them to God. No, mm -hmm. you should hold them accountable. Uh, for instance, I've just been elected the last seven months. This last seven months, the constituent should be able to ask me what have I been able to do this last seven months. Because we have voted for you. If I have reasons for not performing, I should be able to say it. If I have reason to have performed, I should, be able, I should be able to say, oh, I have done this in this area, I've done that in that area. But if you just vote for me, and then you go your way, okay? Other than asking and monitoring what I'm doing, you are cursing me. You won't get any result. So I think Nigerians should now own up to the, the leadership. They are the masters. Those who they brought into power from the councilorship to the president, they are, your, they, are, they are just servants. You are the kings because you have the vote. You make me, you can as well or make me. And therefore, Nigerians should now be reawoken. They should be told that when you put someone in office, you owe it a duty to, on daily basis, ask for his performance, right? And so that is exactly what we are trying to do. For instance, when I inaugurated my team the last two weeks, I told them, the honorable councillors who are in our own way, democratic enough, I told them to ensure healthy oversight for, all, for whatever we are doing and my cabinet. If they don't do the people must hold the honorable councillors accountable because they are there to oversight what the exec uh, executives are doing. And that is exactly what we are expected to be seen. So Nigeria should, you know, rise up to the time. They must rise up to the occasion by ensuring that whoever they put in office, okay, they must hold him accountable for Why successes not? or not successes mm -hmm. between the day he, you know, assumed office until the last day. And that is the significant aspect of where you'll be able to know, okay, at the end of my three year or four years, I have 
another backing of the electorate. If I didn't perform, they check me out. Well, they, most of the electorate say, yes, sorry, it's sorry, let's, let's, uh, yes. Jimmy, let's, let's put you on hold <laughs> okay. and leverage the good signal we're having now mm, from, from Joyce, Joyce. Okay. Okay. so that we can just uh, quickly get the perspectives of uh, Professor Dungpam Shah and uh, sign him up. Prof, uh, let's quickly uh, gain on you on the signal there uh, to get your final thoughts on the uh, issue of ideology and then prospect into 2020 now, what do you think would be, you know, the political climate? What can you decipher now that the president has said, look, I'm stepping down? Yeah, um, so I, I was making the point that our constitution, you know, has given us a, a very good background, you know, for us to think about ideology. An ideology that is going to give citizens food on the table, an ideology that is going to provide employment, ideology that is going to reduce the concentration of wealth you know, in few hands, an ideology that is, is, is going to make this country um, great you know, through, through distribution. So I, I, I think that if we use that section, I mean that, that, that uh, chapter of the Constitution, and we make it justiciable, um, we are going to be moving forward. I've read the constitutions of, of the major political parties you know, in, in this country. What they are really talking about is it is outside you know, the framework of what the constitution you know, has talked about in that chapter two. Already talking about you know, privatization, they are talking about commercialization, they are talking about you know, people paying more extra charges you know, for, for and, 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 and that is contrary you know, to what the constitution says. So what's the ideology of this, this party is basically is that they are interested you know, in moving to the market economy of, of capitalism. It's not what that section of the Constitution talks about. So, and they are all doing this. The World Bank is helping, IMF is helping, people are helping to put policies that will move this country you know, outside that frame which the Constitution you know, has provided for us. Uh, Projecting to 2019, I mean uh, to uh, uh, the 2020, I think that um, this country you know, has a lot of um, people with, 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 with good ideas, people with good will, people who would want to make contributions. But I think the model of governance, you know, is restricting this uh, process. Governance that is so concentrated, so restricted, not very inclusive, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, and I have reasons, you know, to say this, this model will not help us, you know, to move forward. And I think that in 2020, let's... Let's see some loosening, you know, of the model of governance. Let people be more, let, 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 let uh, um, the APC government be more uh, um, amenable, you know, to bringing people on board. I'm happy that they have reconstituted the economic team, um, bringing all shades of opinions, in, you know, to let them also do the same in the other um, aspects of, of governance. And if, if we do this, we're going to see this country move forward. I've, I've been hearing about um, um, the issue of, of, of cabals. I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but in sociology, what we're being taught is that there is the iron law of oligarchy. You will also have some small people of people, or group of people, you know, guiding, you know, leadership, which is okay. But to have this system as being pervasive and uh, in every aspect of this country, that small group keeps controlling, then we will have a problem um, for this country. And I think that um, 2020 should be able to um, tell Nigerians and also tell those in leadership that, look, governance of this country you know, should be done in such a way that we have more inclusivity, we have more people to, um, discussing, um, human rights must be respected, uh, political parties must be free you know, to participate, uh, Godfatherism within political parties must go. Uh, party primaries must be organized on democratic uh, basis. Uh, female participation, you know, must be encouraged. And we would think that this country, you know, should move forward. And not, not, not to be thinking about, you know, problems that we had already passed and we're bringing them back and making the problem uh, uh, um, quite, um, I mean, impossible for us to move forward, you know, as a country. Okay, thank you so much. We have to let you go now. I, we're having some technical issues. I think it's the weather in just. We've been speaking with Professor Dung Pam Shah, Professor of Political Economy and Development Studies, University of Jos. Thank you so much for your contributions. Well, back here in the studio with uh, Adamu Candido, you know, we are talking about account holding the elected officials accountable. Most of the electorates say there's no access. We don't get access to those people who elected because the moment that person is sworn in, he disappears from the landscape. 
He never goes back to the people to ask them what they want, how do they want improvement economically, in agriculture, schools, and everything. They never come back. And when you see them, the car is tinted. You don't even see him again until after four years. <laughs> so how can you hold them accountable based on that? How do you get access to them? <laughs> the issue well, of tinted yeah, cars. Yeah, tinted cars. It's tinted. You never see his face again until after four years. Okay, I think Jume, that may be from some other areas, not in the federal capital territory. No, it's I'm um, generalizing. Uh, it's yeah, a generalized yeah. matter, but I think uh, having access is incumbent okay. on the citizens, and they have all platforms, you know, devices on how to have this access. For instance, as the chairman of this area council, I've had a lot of. You know, I've received a lot of mails, okay? Letters coming from, you know, civil societies. Well, we have 40% of our electorates illiterate. Okay, I'm coming. Civil societies asking me to make an explanation on how many allocations did I receive in the last two months or okay. in the last three months okay. from the federation account. Mm -hmm. They want to see how it is, you know, disposed. What have we done with it? That is an access. Mm -hmm. And we reply them. We invite them to come and see things for themselves. Oh, we have collected 200 million era last month. Out of this 200 million era, 170, 150 uh, million went, you know, for the staff salary. The remaining one we've been able to do this, we've been able to do that. They are satisfied. That means they have access. It means they are, they are not just civil societies on their own. They are also representing an interest. That is the, cit the citizens. But far above that, those of us who are not having the access, right, like a villager, mm. he has his councillor, who he can now ask, councillor, what have you done in your council this last two months? It is incumbent on the councillor to let him know that, okay, our council this time around was able to get so and so and so amount from the federation account, and in this so and so amount, the, the council was able to do this, to do that for you and me. You see, so I'm sorry, an access. Mm. sorry to interject. Now okay. you're talking about access yes. and talking about the councillors. Mm. You see, most times, even the councillors that you, they are, you expect to be you know, at, at, at that the level of, to, with the people, are not even uh, uh, accessible. So this brings us to the issue of recall, mm. which, is, it, which it, is a very laborious yeah, process. Is, that work it, in Nigeria? It is, it is, it is very unfortunate. Mm. If a councillor can also not be accessed, because he lives with the people right in the village. For instance, I chair Amak, but I don't stay in the city. Mm. I stay with the people. On daily basis, before I just came to this studio, I may have met one or two persons who, 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 who want to have one or two things with, uh, mm -hmm. for me. I've met with them, and by the time I go home again, I'll see many people. So the councillor and me are all domiciled around the vicinity, mm -hmm. around the local. I don't need to be far away from We're taking a short break now. Should that happen, mm -hmm. what should the people do? do? They should remove him. How? Their process. The councillors can remove me from office. How can we? That's the process. How can we the make process that process? The process of recall has never been taken to exactly. the logical conclusion It's because in the people have not been sensitized to know their right. And that is why we are saying that if you vote, you don't go home. Mm. You hold the people accountable. The president, the governor, the chairman of councils can be recalled. Can even be removed from office. All right. Not to stop that. All right, I'm a chairman. Let's uh, pause you here. Don't forget that you can be part of our conversation via via our Twitter handle, and of course the Twitter handle is right there on the screen at NTA GMN. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll be zooming off to uh, the concluding part of our conversation. My name is Balaunti. I'm the managing director of Petroleum Product Marketing Company, a subsidiary of NMPC. There are significant uh, price discrepancy between Nigeria and its neighbors across Africa. There's a discrepancy of between 150 to 250 naira. That creates an incentive for arbitrage, whereby smuggling triumphed by taking petroleum product across the neighbors so that it can be sold at higher price. While the smugglers are making the money, Nigeria is paying for it. And that payment is distorting everything that we do in terms of planning, in terms of our ability to fund, and thereby taking money that is meant for development. The introduction of this operation wide will have a reduction of close to 6 million liters on a daily basis, which if you take an average of 150, translates to a saving of over a billion naira every day. That is the benefit of operation wide, and we have started seeing the great benefit. Good morning, sir. <laughs> you are here already? No, 
Now my spirit day, my body day for house. What kind of question is that? Were you not the one that fixed this meeting for 8 a.m.? You are now coming by 10 a.m. And start asking me uh, uh, job questions. Not bad, Chief, now. I'm sorry. Don't you also go late for meetings sometimes? You know now, African time thing. No more African time. And no more pancaking of face during office hours. At the end of the day, we will lose valuable time. We will not make progress. If we want to move this nation forward, we must treat business as business and respect time. Change begins with me. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. Can we go for the meeting now, Chief? Better. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Joining us, we hear that our Kaduna studio is ready and we have Dr. Yunus Atanko, former IPAC chairman and national chairman, National Conscience Party. You've been listening to our conversation with our guest and the one in Jos that we just signed out. Let's have your perspective on politics in 2019. And how, what comes to your mind when you think of how politics, you know, evolved in 2019? Let's have your views on that. Okay, um, uh, this is my first interview this year, so probably I'll use this opportunity to say Happy New Year to Nigerians, and then I wish us a prosperous 2020 uh, uh, a year ahead of us. Uh, quickly, uh, at the point in time, uh, my good friend, uh, uh, Abdullahi Kandido, I thought I was losing him. Uh, he's a progressive person with a progressive mind. And then I was glad that he quickly returned back to his uh, ideological base. And I wanted to congratulate him for taking to the matter. And uh, able, uh, uh, able the truth is made a lot of uh, negative um, I am more concerned about the issue of money politics. I am very much concerned about the issue of inclusivity. I am very much concerned about the issue of mediation and the rules of law. The, the yes, signals yeah, this morning, yeah. it's really impacting on our on our conversation. It's the weather. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. but um, uh, we'll, we'll still keep uh, the IPAC, uh, former IPAC chairman. Okay, we hear his back. We lost it towards the end of the 2019. And this is not to give any blame whatsoever to INEC. Um, INEC uh, leadership tried to follow the rules of law. But unfortunately, majority of the problems come from some of us in the political space. And, and this is very, very clear. I, I, I give a simple analogy of what recently happened. You cannot expect by not putting your priority right. If, for example, in Bayasa, uh, a, a commissioner of, uh, of INEC can tell you that what he was intimidated at a polling situation where he's supposed to control. That's to tell you there's a situ situation on ground. It is not about the commission, but about the people that surround that particular area. They were intimidated. They were not allowed to perform their duty accordingly, and it becomes an issue. Now, we saw the kind of narrative that happened within uh, Kogi elections. It is very, very unheard of. Uh, can you don't make an allusion to something? They like say, if you are not performing, you are not expected to be voted for. But then can we not just position what is happening in Kogi State as regard to what transpired in the election? Obviously, for any progressive mind, anybody who is interested in building this country will want to find out exactly what must have transpired. That is an issue for me. So, but then, the thing is this. If we talk about this country, we must be very, very truthful to ourselves. At a point in time, many people who are in governance today belong to the same political party that they are accusing of because they are in position the one election in that political new political party, they are making it look as if that political party was the worst thing that ever happened. That is hypocrisy. 
We must not be hypocritical about what we do. Unfortunately, majority of the actors who are playing now in this particular political trajectory belong to that political party at that particular point in time. So if you want to put a blame, put a blame on yourself, inclusive of Afraid we're, we're getting too deep into election matters. Mm. Uh, we're actually looking at politics generally, mm. uh, not just election. So, uh, um, can I continue? Uh, all, all right, sorry, we, we cannot take uh, the national chairman of the National Conscience Party as at now. Uh, the signals are not yet clear. When we get that over, uh, we will return to him. Uh, but so far, we've been able, the guests have been able to identify factors that, of course, affected 2019 elections or uh, po po uh, politics, uh, including economy, as the distinguished senator have said, uh, absence probably or lack of it, of ideology, and then the political culture. Okay, um, he's so, still there. He's okay, still there. I'm told that the coast is clear now. Uh, Dr. Tanko, uh, quickly tell us, you, you've talked on some issues, but we are going uh, down the home lane now. What do you think will be the outlook uh, in Nigerian politics this year? Fantastic. Now, one, we must quickly do a reform on our electoral laws. We must help INEC to perform by ensuring that we kind of uh, break down INEC into three spaces, which is the electoral empire, is the electoral uh, uh, monitoring team is able to conduct elections, and we talk about the enforcement area for INEC. Then we talk about the delineation, which I was always suggesting that we deal with it with National Population Commission and Bureau of Statistics. Then we now talk about inclusiveness. Inclusiveness. Look, do not, Nigerians should not look at any, some of us who are in opposition, and anytime we make statements, we are being looked at as enemy, and the next is clear on not like that. The most of law, and the same, the views of the opposition, which is an open, an open opportunity for the country to use, so that It's one of those days uh, you do have to, uh, 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 yes, bear with us. We, we sincerely apologize for the uh, not too good signals we're getting from our outstations. But let's, let's appreciate uh, the for, uh, former IPAC chairman and national chairman, National Conscience Party, Dr. Yunusa Tanko. I know he has quite a lot uh, on his mind, but he's take, taking us to uh, reforms, what yeah, yeah, should be problem. done this year, you know, to better our, our politics in 2020. He talked about electoral uh, reform, ele electoral laws, deletion, and of course, inclusiveness. But again, let me return here. Uh, some would say Nigerian politics is very, very predictable. Uh, like uh, the distinguished uh, senator said, legal battles are almost always certain. Uh, the credibility of electoral process would also always, always be questioned in terms of, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, compromise or complicity on the part of those who are supposed to be democratic institutions. And that's why some people are saying there is need to introduce electronic transmission of election results. Distinguished Senator. Well, after every election, we have reform of the Electoral Act every time. And sometimes we don't do it early enough and leave it till almost election period. Yeah. So it, it's people are suspicious of the reform. And sometimes it, there's opposition as to don't change anything. Now, if we can begin to look at holistically at the reports of the elections from all those who observed it, and then look at the issues that needs reform or amendments of the Electoral Act, and begin early enough to amend those laws in time for earlier elections, because some other elections come earlier than others, then it would douse the tension of the, the 2023 major general elections. Now, what are the reforms we're trying to look at? For me, I would like to see a reform, first and foremost, on how do you handle INEC ad hoc staff? These are people who have 
technically no allegiance to INEC and INEC ideology, even if they're trained. They are there, nominated from different sectors with different opinions of, them, of, of, their own. of their own that they bring on board. We need to use national orientation to begin to whip up patriotism. If we're, we can whip up enough patriotism from now, even anybody you now give the position to as an ad hoc staff would be patriotic at the polling unit to ensure that they're not swayed one the way or the other and they keep the peace. It's not INEC at the national, but those who wear their tag to represent them to carry out the jobs that sometimes, not all of them, may have a, um, may manipulate yes, at the polling sure unit. So how do we uh, adjust the law to address that? Are we bringing punitive measures on them? Are we going to say INEC needs to um, employ them in advance for so long? That will now have financial implications. Are we going to budget for them to be trained for longer than just two weeks and so on and so forth? That's one chain, one sector. The other sector of the um, reform. reform is we, people are clamoring for electronic voting. Mm. Electronic voting, it's not sacrosanct. I remember um, the year in, oh, I forgot the year now, I think 2000, 2000 or so, mm. when um, Al Gore, I think, yes, yes, the yes. Miami incident mm. of electronic yes, voting, yes. The, and it was where ballot boxes yeah. were found. Yeah. Yeah. The Florida. electronic voting was. They're pressing yes for X and it's recording for Y yes. candidate. So it can still be manipulated. If you are asking for electronic voting, what nature of electronic voting are you talking about? How do we secure the data? Because uh, an, an opposition may decide, a particular candidate may decide to influence the network in a particular like area. Like in the 2015-16 um, election of, the America, of America? Yes. So Russia you can, interference. Yeah, you can have in, interference that way. Yeah. We, the government does not own the telecom mm. system. Yes. So they can still infiltrate. So the for you, uh, it's a no-no. No -no. You have to think deeply for it. Okay, okay. Let's Let's do, Adamu Kandiro, mm. your final thoughts on you know, projecting into 2020. Uh, well, I, I, I will be in support of uh, reforms as far as the electoral uh, body is concerned. But let it be one that uh, Nigerians are going to key into, you know, even knowing what the reforms are standing for. Mm. Okay? Because you can't claim for what even the citizens don't, don't even understand. So let the citizens be well informed first so they know that exactly the reform is going to be to their advantage mm -hmm. and to the advantage of the generality of Nigerians. Two, I think we have a president that must be supported. Mm -hmm. Since we're, we're, for one term time, I just have to say this. The president need a lot of support, need a lot of prayer, because uh, we, ha we are lucky to have a president who meant well, who, is, who has nothing to suggest that he's asking for personal gains. Mm -hmm. He's just serving this country to the best of his ability. And so we need a lot of prayers for him and every support that is needed. And so, so also at the local end too, we also need that kind of support so that the people can see dividends of democracy. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Dr. Yunus Atanko, let's quickly get your views, your closing views, uh, hoping that the signals will, will permit us. Uh, it's all about the people exercising the powers vested in them effectively. How can we achieve that in 2020? We need to prioritize what we do. I was just trying to give an example as regard to what we were spending for the refurbishing of seven billion naira, which the money that was used in building the house itself was about seven billion naira. That is a wrong priority. The people want to see what you do for them so that they can give you the particular utmost support that you require. So and we must, as a people, also start thinking about how to redirect our intake in terms of internally generated revenue, not to continue to continue to stiffen the people in the front of taxes and all that will eventually make the people more poor. Then we need to engage the people productively. Like, for example, I am glad about uh, the progress that we made so far as regard to this particular border closure, closure. Because if you notice, the people that surround us, the country that surrounds this 
country, majority of them are francophone countries, and that they have not been given enough support, especially in the terms of fighting insurgencies and all. You could look at the way in which the information has got to uh, 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 weapons and all that have been moved into this country, but it has reduced to a barest minimum. So, but then let's look at the negative effect of that particular border closure and see how we can ameliorate the suffering of the people because actually what we are out to do as leaders in any structure that we find ourselves is to give life and comfort, succor to the needy. And majority of Nigerians are in need at the moment now. So the issue will not be that none of us, none of us as CCOs are interested in bringing, some of those who are sincere will not be interested in bring, putting Nigeria forth first. So in any opposition statement that you hear, take those valuable words that can be useful for you to move your country, for you to move this country forward. And I say, may God bless Nigeria the more. All right, uh, thank you, Dr. Tank Eunice Atanko, uh, former IPAC chairman and national chairman, National Conscience Party. We do really apologize for the bad signals, which didn't afford you much opportunity to uh, speak on uh -huh. some issues. But thank you for the contributions you've made so far. The contributions you've made so far. Thank you. Contributions. All right. Yes, yes, back in the studio, you know, we... We're rounding up now. We're on the last lap, and um, 2020 with elections, we have like um, the by by elections in Kano, Jibril, Abdulmino Jibril. We have Edo. We have Ogun State. So, what do you see politics being played out when these elections come up? It's interesting. You have to look at their respective constituencies. It's a time for their constituents to demand um, to reflect whether they have felt dividend of democracy or whether they've been properly represented by those who are going back for these by-elections. And it's a wonderful opportunity for those um, going back to seek uh, return to their seat, to actually project themselves and let the people know what they have done. Yeah. And you'll be, it will be very interesting when um, the people's voices goes either way. When they don't return them, it shows how they are perceived. And when they return them, it also reflects something. But most importantly, um, feedback from the people is, whether critical or not, is a way of assessing and should be looked at as a mechanism to improve the ruling party's um, performance, wherever they find themselves. If you don't get, if you don't see criticisms as feedback, mechanism, then you cannot improve yeah. on what you have, what you're doing. You don't know where you are, and you don't know how well you're doing. Psychophancy sets in, yeah. and at the end of it, four years later, you wonder why you were voted out. Yeah. So that's my own. And, but I think this, the crux of the matter here is Nigerian citizens. Myself. We need help to be, become more patriotic. And more involved, and more, more participatory. Involved. Yes. More, talking Inclusive. about participation, uh, um, the uh, candidate, we will we, we'll just take a few things very briefly. Yes, I'd already started, I'm, I'm told to round up, but I'd already started with you, so let me finish my line of thought. How do we already? The political space has been you know, opened up to accommodate quite a number of people, dozens of political parties. But in the end, it's, it's wasted resources. It boils down to two, a two horse race. Mm. What do you think will happen in 2020? Briefly. <laughs> very, very briefly, I think uh, 2020 we expect the best from all political actors. Uh, those who are elected should do the best they can to, you know, ensure that the people's uh, trust is kept. And then, of course, hate. Do, do we streamline party, parties or, well, look, or no, open, it, open up the space open further? Open up the space. Open up the space or somehow uh, allow people to make a choice for whatever they want. But also, let me quickly say hate hate among us mm. should be you know, brought down. Mm -hmm. Because for we in the FCT, for instance, in the last 2019 election, uh, hate factor, okay, played, mm. a, big role. played a lot. Mm. And the beneficiaries, whoever is in the Senate today or House of Rep from FCT is a beneficiary of, his, uh, of, of hate it's politicking. It. That is it. It wasn't truly a manifestation of, oh, we wanted this man, no. All those that benefited, that are sitting today in the Senate or National House of Rep from the Federal Capital Territory, benefited from hate 
Uh, so we should voting. downplay. You want to see that downplay? More love and peace. What? Yeah, love thank and you peace. So. And thank decorum. you so much for your input. Yeah. We thank you. We, okay, we thank you, Abdullah Adamu, candidate chairman, Abuja Municipal Area Council. We thank you for your input. It's my pleasure. And um, Senator Hirat Gwedebe, Chairperson Senators Forum. It's been a pleasure as always having you. you. I forgot to ask you about the fight, seven affirmative action. <laughs> well, we'll move on to smart updates. <laughs>